Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your host, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by betonline.ag. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from NFL playoffs to pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and much more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at BetOnline. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. BetOnline is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V to receive your rewards. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary 76ers point guard Eric Snow and my brother Tasia Dash. Guys, we said it. We said we had to win these two games this weekend, and we did. And we did now begins the actual the road trip part and see if you know the guys are having fun in LA. And uh, we'll see what happens tonight and, uh, and on Thursday against Portland. But, you know, quickly before we get into some of the big headlines from this weekend, what did you guys think of the the two uh, game-winning shot uh, endings that we had in uh, Utah and in L.A. this past weekend? Find a way. I mean, I think that, you know, when you're on the road, and you're on the, it's always tough, especially when you go out west. Um, so just coming out of each game with a victory is, is what it's about. You know, how it can be ugly at times, but. You know, pulling out those victories, and as you get down to the end of the year, as we see, it's already a crunch, it's the top of the East now. So every victory counts. Yep, it's good to pull. Out. We have a. I mean, I said it weeks ago. We played so many close games, so it's good to have that close game battle tested. We've had a lot of comeback from behinds. We've had a lot of last second shots. It's good to win in every kind of mold too, because you're just blowing everybody out. And when you get real tested later on. You know, we're having that now. So it's good to get those out of the way and just know how to win with, you know, final seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like in like years past, you know, we would have a double digit, like, because I think both games we had like 10 to 12 point, like, like leads at one point in the game. And then we lost those. And then we came back to win both these games. In the past, I feel like once we lose those double digit, like leads, we, we pretty much lose that game or we come back and then we kind of lose in a close one in the end. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of nice to see the battle tested and, you know, definitely games we would have lost years ago for sure. Yeah. Uh, also, another thing I, I want to ask you guys about: uh, Kyrie made a comment about uh, Harden um, this week, uh, talking about how the team's success, or that this past weekend, talking about Brooklyn's success, what's different this year. Um, and Kyrie made a comment: people are thinking it's a shot at James Harden. He said, "Well, I'm I'm in the lineup this year, and also we don't have any halfway somebody's in the locker room." So a lot of people are thinking that's a a, a slight at James Harden. What do you, what do you guys think about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna try to guess. I mean, it could be about Harden. It could be about Ben Simmons not playing. Yeah. Who knows? That'd be pretty rough to dog your own teammate, but why Why is he talking about himself? I think he only played half the games last year, so. Yeah, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it could be it could be him. You know, he only played, you know, home games. Or what, I mean, road games. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to try to guess what Kyrie was trying to say on that. I'm, I'm going to just take it for what it is. Yeah. And if he's it is hard, well. he's playing well. They're playing well. Yeah, I'm not gonna put words in his mouth. And if he is talking about hard, like, dude, we're so far beyond that now. Like, yeah, just, I don't, I don't, I don't. Just know. get on. I, I just, I don't, I don't necessarily see if if that's what he's talking about. Then that's his truth. I mean, he's 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 saying you're asking this question of why he thinks it's like that is. You know, it's, it's, I don't think there's any question that Harden was probably wanted to leave last year. Yep. I don't think that was a question. Yeah. So um, he wouldn't be necessarily a knock like James is a bad person. He would just be a guy that wanted to leave. Yeah. That, that yeah. happens. It's a, it is a valid comment. Yeah. What I think is funny, though, is that part of the reason why Harden wanted out, they said, is because he was tired of holding it all down while Durant was hurt and while Kyrie was halfway there. So yeah. it's like, that's why he wanted out because you weren't there. Now you're back. And it's like, Oh, we don't want halfway guys here. It's like, well, you were halfway last year, dude. What do you mean? I know it's because so of back team, but still. Yeah, that's why, that's why we can't guess about what he's saying. You know? Yeah. 
Let's until he the quote comes from him and he's very specific on what he's talking about, mm. then I'll respond to that. That's not Kyrie stock. Kyrie loves kind of giving those vague responses about things. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's just if it is about Harden, which I don't know if it is or not, but it's just interesting to see that we're still getting shots at a former player where we're like we've already moved past the whole Ben Simmons and past like past six or stuff, and which is Done. good. Shows our locker room's kind of done with that stuff and just have, have, have moved onward from then. We got our own stuff to deal with. Yeah, and that's – Everyone does. Yeah. Um, and that's what we're going to get into right now. It's got the, the big takeaway. So, obviously, we won in Utah. We won in L.A. this weekend. But uh, a big thing was uh, the lineup on um, Sunday was Maxi coming off the bench versus the Lakers, which is apparently something he suggested to Doc. So, Doc said uh, that Maxi will be getting 30 minutes a night it just might change when he gets them. Just um, And Max, he had this to say after the game when talking about him coming off the bench. Sometimes you just got to be the bigger person. I felt like it was kind of trending towards me coming off the bench, but I'm a professional at the end of the day. I feel like I am a starter in this league, but I feel like our team is so good that I think we can have multiple people starting. Guys, we kind of talked about this for the last few weeks that Maxi might start off slow, maybe come back to the starting lineup. At some point, Melton would stay in the starting lineup. But now we're kind of seeing that this, this might be a thing where we might see a little bit of Melton starting and Maxi coming off the bench being our sixth man. What do you guys think about this whole, uh, these new developments? I, I don't know about a guy that, you know, everybody says a future all star on the team just saying, hey, I want to come off the bench. Like, I just, I don't know Rich Paul. I don't, I don't know how they can – I don't know how his camp can be like, this is something we want to do. I, I just don't see it. I just think – I think it's a more of a – in order for me to maximize what I do for this team, this is what I might have to do this year, the rest of the year. And I think it's him being injured kind of almost <clears> – <throat> Holding back from what he was doing in the starting lineup because <clears throat> they had success without what he was doing. Mm -hmm. So now you come back in and, and, and if he tries to go back to what he was doing, it's different. You know, he was taking quick shots. He was getting out of transit. He was doing a lot of things that, they they weren't doing because they didn't really have anyone like him doing it. So they weren't playing that style and you win some games. So now when he comes back and then all of a sudden he goes back to the maxi he who he is and it's different. It can come off different now, being that he missed so much time. That's the only thing I can think of is is him saying, Well, I want to be me. What's the best way I can be me? Bench, maybe. If if coming off the if being a six man is the best way I can beat me, then I'd rather do that. I'd, I'd rather do that than being a starting lineup and all of a sudden, you know, have to sacrifice too much of my game. Now, I can see that. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that because I don't think that this is something that a couple games can decide. I, I, I would think this is a February, maybe decision, and you kind of like, oh, you know, a month or so from coming back from injury, you make this decision. But a few games, a couple weeks, nah, I don't think it was his idea. That's what I don't think it was his idea. I think it was thrown out to him to simmer with it. I think it was his idea, maybe his idea to agree with it. I just don't, I just don't see why he would go to them and say, hey, bring me off the bench. Or they set him up for like, hey, Tyrese, we're thinking of a, trying a few things out, and you know, we wanted to see maybe if you were how you feel off, about it coming off yes. the bench. Yes, exactly. So you're cool with it. Okay, great. I'll see you tomorrow. I hang I, up. I just if if you're going in and you're and you see that hey, it's a chance my numbers are going to go down in that starting lineup. I don't know because the the way out from what I'm seeing. Hold on, let me let me go back. From what what I'm seeing from from Maxi now, it's kind of the Maxi I envisioned at the beginning of the year. Um, I think he had a, not I think he did he had a better start to the season 
than I anticipate. Mm-hmm. I know you all were is you know really high on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was sort of like, hold your horses. It's it's not enough balls. You know, you can't get enough shots. Yeah. Like we really don't know how this is going to go. Um, so I just think that as the season goes on and all of a sudden they're pouring so much into Joel and James is dominating the ball, it's just you got to get some separation from playing all your minutes with those guys. But like I said from early on, I don't think you have to take him out of the starting lineup to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Just take him out earlier. Start him and stagger it. Yes. Like, you don't have to take him out the starting lineup to to accomplish this. If you're still playing 30 minutes. If he's playing 30 and James is playing 30 and Joel's playing 30, they're still playing a lot of minutes together. Yeah. What difference does it make if they start? Like, that, that's the part I don't – I don't – I don't understand that part like unless you're saying – unless you're saying – as soon as you come in the game, we're going to give you the ball and you just go. Yeah. Or they're saying, we take you out the lineup and we'll give, we're going to give the ball to, to Tobias more. Like, I, I don't know what they're saying in the locker room, but I don't really understand the guy in the starting lineup and then go to the bench and say, this is going to be better. Then, you know. Did no no one felt that this was going to be better until he got injured? Do you do you think that maybe the plan because when he came off the injured list, when he came back from the injury, they did start him off on the bench, and I think they had to bring him. And so they go to state with Steph Curry. No, but I think they I think they had to bring <laughs> him back because we lost. I think Hard missed a game and Tobias missed a game. So you know, obviously. Max is the guy to go back to the yes. starting lineup, especially if you want points. But I think maybe the plan all along was to have him come off the bench for the time being. I think they only had to bring him back in a necessity. I think if, if no one got injured, we had all of our guys for the last since he's been back. I bet you he'd be on the bench this entire time. But he, here, here's my question to that, Tage. Since he's been back, Melton hasn't been better than he was when no Max Melton was struggling playing. a little bit. Yeah, Melton's been struggling. So you, so it's not like He's Melton not has been keeping that same level of play that he had when Maxi was out. So why then would you say, okay, well, we're gonna keep him in there? If if you know what I'm saying, like that's why I'm like, this is, I don't, I'm still a little confused on why, because I don't. I don't think it makes us a. I don't think it makes us a better team. I, I think it's the same thing as he's playing thirty minutes a game. Defensively, I think it matters a little bit. Mel- Melton statistically, offensively, has regressed since Maxi came back, but I think his defense is still just generally better than t- Maxi's. Because I, I read a stat from someone on Twitter saying, pre hardened injury, we were twenty third in defensive rating. Then when Maxi came back recently, we've been twenty second. In between those two periods, we were first. So before and after, those are direct correlations to Maxi playing with our with all of our guys. I'm not saying Maxi's the problem defensively, um, but between Harden and Maxi, who's going to go on the bench? Let's be honest there. So like, that's not a question. Like they're not bringing Harden off the bench. So if someone's got to draw that short straw, it's going to be Maxi to go off the bench. Um, so yeah, I mean. We've said it for a while. I mean, Melton provides a better balance for the starting unit. Um, We just need a guy with those guys who can shoot and play defense. We don't really necessarily need a guy who can take over. We already have takeover guys on that. So we have three takeover guys on that that lineup. Anyone in the Harden, uh, Tobias, or MB can go off for 15 points in a row. I mean. So so, um, we're not going to play all those guys to end the game? They will. They will. I don't. That's why I don't get it. Like, what's they are going to play plenty of minutes. I, I'd love to see the last few games how many minutes they play together. I bet you it's a, it's a lot. Uh, so they are. Gonna be- like, so you you know, Maxi don't start the game. Say for instance he comes in with four minutes on the clock, 
five minutes on the clock. Finishes the quarter, that's five, right? That's five minutes, right? Yeah. Say so he comes in for Harden. It's only 36 minutes left in the game. And he's getting 30 minutes a game. Yeah. So is he not going to come out? Say he, he he comes in at six minutes left. Who's he coming in the, quarter. in the first quarter? It doesn't he comes in for Melton? Six minutes left, right? Okay. okay. He plays the whole quarter. That's six of 30. It's only 36 minutes left after the first quarter. So he's going to play. He got to get 24 of that 36. Yeah. That's a lot of minutes with those guys. That's a lot of straight minutes, too, to play the rest of the game. Only missing six minutes yes. the rest of the game, right? And we just saying 30. You know it's going to be higher than that. Mm -hmm. Well, if he misses the first six minutes. It's 12. He has he has 12 minutes that that he has to um, – that he would have, you know, free to, basically on, on the sideline. 12 minutes of the last three quarters. Yeah, and you already and we already know he's not starting the third quarter, so that's six right there. That's six. So if you bring him, <laughs> are you not going to finish the game with him? You're going to be taking him in and out the lineup. Then. They're going to finish the game. I I would say definitely finish the game. If he, okay, if he, so then what, what you're going to have is you're going to have him in and out the lineup. Yeah. So you're just saying you can still start him and just do it the opposite way in the first quarter and the third quarter. Still, like I just that's the part I don't understand. Like how does not starting him make us better. Now you say defensively, but is it is it is it okay defensively? I give you that, and I and I believe that. But if he comes in at the six minute mark, they're both playing six minutes each quarter, the first quarter. So what difference does it make if he starts the first six or finishes the the first six? Maybe it matters who he comes in for. So if he, if he finishes it off with Melton and not Harden, then you're staggering Harden and Melton. On, uh, you're staggering Harden and Maxi for the first quarter. They don't play a minute together. Maybe if that's what they do, I'm just saying. Hypothetically, no you're taking out James in, in the first six minutes. You mean at the six minute mark? Yes. Or maybe you put him in for Melton. Maybe that him and Harden play like two, three minutes together, and you take out Harden for. Matisse or Shake at that point. Uh, yeah, I understand all this, but did Doc say when he was getting his thirty? Did he say that James was going to get less? Mm -mm. No, no, I don't think he clarified that. <laughs> Harden still playing like what thirty friggin' seven minutes to get whatever he's playing some ridiculous. Okay, so he's first. playing thirty five. Yeah. They're bound to. Uh, you, got, you got you go and you only got forty eight minutes in five positions. Mm -hmm. Max, he had 33 minutes on, on Sunday coming off the bench. 33. 33? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Harden's playing 37 a game. Okay. And also, what I wanted to say, too, where does this go? Like, how long is he okay with that? What if he's totally healthy, killing in? He's like, you know, because we saw, I mean, a guy like Jordan Clarkson's good to compare that to. Clarkson was okay for the bench, and he was okay for years with it before he was like, all right, I'm a starter, man. I I'm a starter in this league. En enough of this. Do we do this the rest of the season? Do we just take it game by game? I mean, I I I how long before Maxie's like, I don't want to come off the bench anymore? How long before it starts tainting the waters, right, with 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 it reading, uh, with this contract coming up eventually? I mean, the contract, the issue is going to be like how they treat him. Are they going to treat him like a starter? Or are they going to treat him like a reserve? Yeah. That's where the issue will come in. That's you know that's where the questions are going in. If he's saying, "Hey, I'm a 20 point screen, they'd be like, "Okay, well you're, you know, we're going to pay you CJ McCullough, Drew Holiday money, or are we going to, you know, pay you like Alonzo Ball salary, or like Clark's all good money? It's all good money. Yeah, great. Yeah. Money. I'm saying, but big difference though. Big difference though. 35 and like 18. It's a big difference. Yes. It's about, it's about double for the same amount of minutes <laughs> and for the same That's amount of output. So, so are you going to get paid like Drew Holiday or are you going to get paid like Alonzo Ball did? And he, he, was, he, he was smart, though. He clarified, I'm a starter in this league, but 
since we are so good, there's a lot of stars in this team. A lot of guys say they starters in this league, but don't. Yeah, yeah. But, but overall, if that's if that story is true, I love the maturity. He's a good kid. Uh, that's what we talked about this a couple weeks ago, I believe, and we said, you know, he's the kind yeah, of personality. There, 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 there's there's no way from a con- contractual standpoint that you can sit up here and, and you can you can say that they move moving me out of the starting lineup, and before my injury, I'm putting up 20 numbers a game on the top four C in the East, and then I just go to the bench and you make it. Because it's <clears> – either way you look at it, they can sugarcoat it all they want. It's it's a demotion more than it is promotion. Now, if, if, I brought, it, if I brought you into the office and I was like, hey, Eric, uh, our plan for you coming off injury – was to have you start off the bench for a little while while you get your feet wet. We had to pull you back into the starters because of the injuries, but you are you cool with going back to what we had planned for you anyway coming off that injury? If that was their plan to have him come off the bench, he would have came off the bench pre-injury. But what if they scapegoat the injury as the reason why? Then this is demotion. Did you see it as a demotion when he came back off the bench, fresh off the injury? Like no, his- because I, I give you give you a certain amount of time to kind of work your way back into it, especially if you're on limited minutes and you got to kind of get a feel. You don't have to necessarily play against the starters or start the game. You kind of work your way back into it. But I give you a couple games for that. Okay, but to say but to say a guy's playing and this is a guy that we that you all said. Um, we shouldn't trade for Kevin Durant, and now all of a sudden hey, he hold can't on a start second. anymore. Hold now on a second. He can't, he can't start anymore. <laughs> so, so you all didn't say that. Don't we shouldn't include him in, in no, that if trade? We go, if we go back, I, I think, think I I'd say it. I trade him for Durant. Uh, who said it? I, I think I said it. Yeah. 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 Marcus <laughs> said. It. I know you said it. Yeah. I'm so max, you okay. guy. I don't want to. You know. Okay. So I'm just saying, if you're saying. This is a guy we shouldn't include for that. And now all of a sudden it's great to bring him off the – come on, man. How many bench guys in this league would you not trade Kevin Kevin Durant for? None. You include any, you include any bench – any team in this league would include any bench player to get Kevin Durant. I know we weren't playing on this conversation, but I may as well ask now. It seems like we're prioritizing win now over Maxi's development. Obviously, this is a win now team. If that's the case, do you take a little less value, come back, and trade out Maxi for a better fit in the starting five? I mean, I think that's always the case if you feel like you can get better. I don't think that's something you look for. Mm-hmm. I think that if something happens, it happens. But I don't think they're going into the season looking to trade him Unless they we they know something we don't know and they don't want to pay him. Because I think it's gonna come to, I think it's gonna come down to a contract is and, and that's what I'm saying. I think bringing him off the bench hurts his value. Absolutely. I think that. Absolutely. Now him saying I'm a starter in this league and I chose to do this is saying like y'all gonna have to pay me like a starter. Yes. And when it comes to it, they're gonna be like, well, you're reserved. Let me ask you a question. Who fits better in our starting five, OG and Anobi or Tyrese Maxey? It's interesting that you say that because I think Tyrese Maxey fits better if OG is in it. Ah, yeah, well. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can overcome the, de- the defensive aspect. Because he becomes the defensive guy. But isn't that what Tucker is supposed to be? That's my point. Problem is those three points. Well, we get we Tucker. get a defensive guy and take the offensive guy out of the lineup. Like I don't. That's why I'm not understanding it. Like that's what Tucker was supposed to be. What do you think, Marcus? In this in this current starting five, OG and Nobi or Maxi as a better fit? In the starting five, right, in the starting five. right now. So right now, by OG in the starting five as of right now. But who has? So you got OG at, with Tucker. Oh, I would I would sub I would sub uh, Tucker out for OG. 
So you'd, you'd have oh, you said OG or Max. You play three, so it'd be Harden, Melton, OG, uh, um, Bias, Embiid, Tobias, and Embiid. I mean, best so case scenario you, would be if we you get got OG. You got to if you get an OG, you got to not have somebody. What do you, you right. mean in our starting five? In our line, I'm just saying that are we just getting them how? Oh, I mean, we're we're like up anybody Max, to get Maxie. him? Maxi for Maxi. Yeah, it's but that's what I'm saying. It's an interesting question because Maxi, you would think have a higher because he's on a rookie contract. He's still you know going up. A lot of people would say Maxi has more value than OG, but OG would make our team better, which is interesting. It's an interesting back and forth on that one because I've seen a lot of people talk about that on Twitter. They say like. If you do an OG for Maxi, you're not prioritizing the future at all, even though OG's not old by any means. But you're saying, I want the best possible lineup right now with well, Harden. I think people to say that are people like Marcus that value, that think Maxi is going to be, you know, Donovan Mitchell. Depends on how you view Maxi. Yeah, it's true. That's what I think it comes down. But you're right, though. And I, we, and I don't, so go ahead. I was gonna say, you're right though. If we could swing, I don't it have to be Tobias to get something else to go back to Toronto. If you could swing OG and not get rid of Maxi, and you have a lineup of like Maxi, Harden, OG, Tucker, and uh and Embiid, now you're also cooking too. That then that's that's a well balanced, I think that's a well balanced lineup right there. Yeah, I mean it, look at the end that of the would, day. I don't I, that would happen. With 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 I just like they can make it is like I said. I don't coach the team. I don't manage the team. I don't. I don't. You know. I'm just a fan, just like everybody else. Um, but from playing in the game and playing in the league, I don't know many cases where you go from a starting lineup having a great deal of success and then go to be a reserve and is looked at as a promotion. Twenty one points per game this year. I just don't know how that that's possible. Besides injury or injury included? Injury included. You're saying it's, it's, it's okay to have a temporary bench until you get your feet. Yes. Back you. Okay. Yes. So how, let me ask you a question. Hold on, didn't, James, didn't James get injured? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Didn't he miss a lot of time? Yeah. Did he, did he, is he coming off the bench? You could, you could say there's different injuries though. You could say maybe. Saying, is he coming off the bench? Worse. Is he coming off the bench? No. No, Did no. he ever come off the bench? They yeah. announced before he came back, though, that Harden would have no <laughs> restriction. He'd come back, like, full-fledged. Did he ever come off the bench? No. But was, it ever was, a was it ever a conversation? No. No. Okay. In fact, they said the opposite. So, when, he, so, when he was coming back, so, they said he'll come back full-fledged. Okay, so this is more about – They did say that, Max would have a minute restriction, though. I know, but this is more about – You can have – I had minutes restriction as a starter. Yeah, no, you can't. I, I came off a broken ankle and had minutes restriction to start. And we went I right was, back into the starting lineup. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I lived injuries and I lived coming back. So the, the minute restriction and the, the not starter, guys it, it, guys in the league want to be put in position to what's most comfortable and what they do best. So if you're a starter, you're not going to say, hey, in order for me to get back to where I want to be, give me something different. No, give me what's familiar. What's more familiar, not different. Yeah. Plus, I mean, that minute restriction went away really quickly. He's had, I think he's averaged like 36 points per game the past oh. week. Like, like, seriously, like, I'll just, like, I, I, I hope it works. But like I said, this could be an issue down the road. He, is, I mean, he has struggled. I mean, his three point shot at least has struggled. Besides his defense, it's gone down percentages every month. This is his worst uh, month of a season so far in, in, in January. He's shooting 30, 32.7 from three. Yeah, trying to fit back into the way things were. He, he mm -hmm. just that's that's called having a flow. He, he just he kind of lost his flow with the injury. He was grooving. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know? With a young guy like this, Eric, um, just talking about the, the mental and the confidence aspect, is this something that could like harm him confidence wise by demoting him? Like as you said, a, a demotion could this like could this impact him at, as far as a confidence level? I don't think it. I don't think it for him. I don't in the, the amount of work that he puts in. I don't think it affects him mentally and confidence wise as much as it does maybe emotionally. Um, you know, guy, you know. Being disappointed, upset, 
kind of like, you know, not really feeling like they view him the same. And like, that's like the emotions of it. Um, because like, they, we're going to have a game and it's going to happen. We're going to have a game where he's going to play 20 minutes. And, they, and he ain't going to finish the game. He's not going to finish the game. It'll probably be because he's struggling that game, though. How's he going to respond? But I'm just saying, it's it's James Harden struggle. What is what, does he get taken out? Mm-hmm. Okay, different, different strengths, though, right? Hardy because he's a star. Him. No, because he's a starter. <laughs> because well, he's other, a starter. He he is, but there's other ways to contribute. And Max, he doesn't get other people involved, really. So, hard, hard. If he has a bad so, shooting so, night, he's going to have 15 assists. Maxi, he's having a bad shooting night. It's just a bad shooting night. That's it. You know what I mean? Then, then that's how you view him. Then, then you don't view him. In, um, you don't view him in that same way of the way Marcus and everybody talked about. If that's the case, well, Donovan Mitchell kind of is that guy, right? He's a volume score that doesn't really get a lot of assists. Doesn't that his mo too? He can still be. You can but still Donovan be on your way to be Donovan game, Mitchell, but he's gonna finish games though. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell would be shooting three for nineteen, still gonna. Play the fourth quarter and shoot ten more times. That's true. So that's what. So all I'm saying is, it, it's going to come down to kind of seeing what happens when on a situation like this where he's not shooting particularly well, or because if he's shooting forty percent, um, that that could happen based on the percentages. That could happen. You know, not a lot, but it could happen often. So maybe they all average out. How long do you give it before him coming off the bench is a problem for him? You think? Just your just opinion. I think it it all depends on how much success he has and how consistent that success is. Not um, team success, just his success. His success. Because the team has had success while he's had his. So if the team's going to have it and he does it, then it's like, well, y'all thought it was my fault. Let's put it like this. This decision seems like it's more of a team decision than a maxi decision. What was that joke MB you made, Marcus? Uh, I hope I'm not coming off the bench. <laughs> Well, th- 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 that ties into our second topic. Th- that that no, I mean, when I when I say that before you go, it's like meaning like the decision is better for the team than it is for Max. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, which puts him in a hard spot because if he goes against that, then it's like, oh, so you're putting your your five more points yes. in the game ahead of yes. five more wins. So so, so a guy can say the right things and go about his business, but still not like it. Yeah, and that's probably what we're dealing with right now. When you showed me that, Marcus, you remember, like, why did you make that face when I was watching? And I was like, clearly he doesn't like this. I mean, like, he's a nice kid. I like him a lot, and I'm glad he's saying that because then we'd have problems, but he doesn't like it. There's no way he could like it. There's no way. Yeah, he said the right things, and that's good for him. He's a mature kid. He's a good kid. I I like that. I like Maxi. Part of the reason I like him. But he clearly doesn't like that, and I don't know how long it's going to last before he – is a little more vocal about it. I mean, yeah, we're killing it. Let's say we roll off ten straight. He's not going to speak out. Of, he's not going to speak out about it. But I'm sure Rich will. If, oh yeah. If they don't like things, and so. if not now, when those negotiations come yeah. up, he will eventually. Yeah. If it doesn't go as they would like. Mm-hmm. Hey, I mean, he offered to come off the bench. You know, <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. They say. Um, okay, so talking about. Same kind of uh, topic here. Um, so what Tasia asked me, but the Embiid quote, Embiid said, I hope I don't come off the bench. That was in relation to Doc talking about Maxi coming off the bench and how um, there will be three different versions of the starting lineup depending on the matchup. Um, this is interesting because in the past, Doc's gotten crap for not having any variety in his lineups. Now that he is doing that, uh, you see a lot of Sixers fans pissed off that he's doing that because Maxi's coming off the bench. Um, and uh, you know, I kind of like this whole matchup, uh, uh, the lineup by uh, matchup approach. Um, so I want to ask you guys, what do you think of the Doc's new thing with the having different starters depending on different matchups that we have going forward? 
Um, do you do you think that's just to maybe make make Max you feel better? Like it's not just going to impact you. I, I think it's I think it's partial that he because it's obviously that he would be in the lineup in some of those cases. Yeah, um, maybe, yeah, yeah. The only thing I can think you you would do is maybe go three guards. Like who else are you going to put in the lineup? So. Last we did, that's what we did Saturday against Utah. We Tucker, Tucker, when Tucker was out, we had a three guard lineup. Yeah. To start. So that that that's the speculative. I yeah, saw. that's what I'm just saying. Like that's you. So you taking Tucker or Tobias out and putting in Maxi. Um. So what? What's the different lineup? You put Maxi in for Tucker, or you put him in for Tobias? Like you're not, you're not gonna bring Tobias off the pitch. No, what? it's stuck. It's no matchup. There's no matchup. You can say he needs to come off. So if if you put Maxi in for Tucker because we're playing somebody with, you know, three guards. Like I don't like. I don't know who 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 who, who we gonna play like that. That Boston, you're not gonna do it. Milwaukee, not really. You mean with three guards? Yeah, like who we gonna who Cleveland? Like who 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 we gonna, the Pacers? Like. We changing lineups for one game? I don't get it. Could you do? I can um, understand like some of the playoffs. Maybe you want to make an adjustment. An adjustment, but we we changing our lineup for a game? Raptors, Knicks. You maybe justified against the Warriors. Well, how about like Jordan Poole doesn't start? The Hawks run out Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, and Bogdanovich. That's another one. Yeah, but PJ Tucker and Tobias, like he's a spot up shooter with those two guys. That's the part I don't understand. Like, what what, what team is gonna make you change your lineup? Yeah. The Suns when they have Paul Booker and Bridges. You gonna change the lineup for Bridges? No. No. It probably it's probably what you, you already said it, but it probably is Boston though. How are we gonna change it for Boston? Maybe they're thinking Melton has a better chance guarding Brown than Tucker does. I don't know. Then who's gonna guard Tatum? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, we'll, we'll see, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't like, I just don't, I hear Doc. I just don't know, like, what the three lineups can be. Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't look around the league and, you know, most of the time you're going to make a change is going to be against one of the top teams. I don't see a top team giving you that many issues that you feel like, hey, I need to change my lineup. Well, two of those lineups are Maxi with Maxi without Maxi. So he's making it sound a lot better by saying there's three different matchups, but really two of those are with and without Maxi. That's two of them. The other one would be the three lineup with both of them in there. That's it. Like those are the those are most likely the three. And honestly, uh I saw a tweet of the minutes of all, all three of those lineups and the plus minus and the uh, per hundred possessions. And they're like they're nearly identical. Our our, our normal lineup is plus 12 uh melton instead of maxi is plus 11 and three guard lineups plus 11.9 so wow it's like it's a, it's a very small sample size with the three guard line it's only 21 minutes we've done it almost 22 minutes so it's, it's very small but they're not like what are you really doing i, I don't know like, yeah I, I don't know yeah uh I, I think it was – now that I'm more I think about it, I think it was just to make the whole Maxi thing sound better. Well, it's not just Tyrese. It's it's just, We're doing a lot of different things here, three different li- lineups throughout different matchups. It's like, oh, okay, oh, okay, so it just doesn't affect Tyrese. I know it's other things. Okay, well – but, hey, we yeah, gave – Yeah, y'all, y'all can go ahead with all that, man. We gave Maxi credit for – All I see is the team that's tied for, what, third or fourth place – and in the East, in the crowded two, three, four spot, five, whatever, two through five is very crowded, three or four games behind number one. And 
I don't see any of those other teams um come by lineups. Yeah. But we we have I mean we've had our ups and downs. They got year. injuries too. They got injuries. I mean, Cleveland, yeah, they got a rotating three spot. Um Milwaukee has injuries. Yep. Um Boston's been pretty solidified with the exception of Robert Williams. Boston is set. They you know, they you know, they got who you know they are. Brooklyn, pretty much set. They got some rotating guys, but they had tons of injuries. Yep. Um, you know, their shooter, best two shooters outside of KD been injured a lot and missing and missing games. Ben has been out. Mm-hmm. Um Miami's had a lot of injuries. Uh yeah, so I'm just yeah. I just all right. I mean, we, we I guess it's a wait and see. We'll see. Yeah. You have to show me because I don't I don't I'm not from the outside in looking. It's like, hey, we need to take Maxi out of the starting lineup, and then we're gonna have to start three different lineups based on who we play. I didn't necessarily look at it like that, but you know, I guess I gotta wait and see. I'd rather hear him do that than be very rigid with the lineups and never want to change. Because, again, like you said, Marcus, he has been dogged for that throughout his career, like just being stubborn and sticking with those guys no matter what. So at least he recognizes that something can be tinkered to make it better. Yeah, I, I, get, I, get, I, get, I, get what, I get what you're saying when you want to change your rotation. But starters is different. Starting different teams. I, we we don't see where teams come in and based on who they're playing in the regular season they start different guys like like I said if we're playing Milwaukee and all those guys are healthy they're not playing different guys I mean they they play Lopez and all them guys no matter what center it is they still start Lopez but you've had teams lose because of that too I remember when Utah when they would not bench Gobert for a vast majority. They got booted from a couple different playoffs for that. Yeah, taking him out or playing him less minutes is something. Not starting him is something else. Yeah, that's true. That's how you lose players. That's true. So okay, because so no I- matter how you no matter how you look at it, taking somebody out of the lineup does not look like a promotion in any way or fashion or form. If they're a starter. And to take them out is never looked at as anything good. So that being said, do you think they're just disappointed with Maxi since his injury? No, I I don't think it's a, a Maxi thing. I think it's a team thing. Like I said before, I think it's just this is just what's best for the Sixers, even though it's not what's best for Maxi. But those plus minuses are pretty close. It's like it's not like it's night and day. I'm just saying that just just going for. I think that that's what they if they're doing it. I don't think they're doing. That's what they think. Just look at the other way around. If it was better for the, if it was worse for the Sixers, but better for Maxi, what do you think they would do? They wouldn't do it mm, for sure. Do, do you think but, they, they, they talked too hard and then beat about this this move? You think this is something that just Doc just did, or is it something that he they probably spoke with the you know our two our two guys uh, hard and then beat about this? I, I would think I would think that he had a conversation with them about it. So they wouldn't be blindsided and know that they're gonna have to ask questions, answer questions about it, and they're gonna have to fill it. And Maxi come to them and say something to them. They, you know, they don't want to be blindsided by it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he necessarily asked for their permission, but he probably made he them aware of the change. I'm telling you, my, my guess is that they wanted to do this when he came back from injury, but their playing got messed up when we had other injuries and he had to get back into the lineup, and then it looked like a demotion. Because if a guy you want to start him off slow, come back from injury, it looks okay to do that. Like, it, it's a good, it's a good cover for making him come off the bench. But then that all got messed up when he had to go back into the starting well, line. I mean, I, I mean, you know, you, you're, I think you're, you're right on to something when you say it was something part of their plan because they make the change. You know, you you start talking about it after you win. That's usually a sign when you want to kind of bring something into play when you're winning versus when you're losing because then when you're losing you're it really him. looks like him 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 yep yeah you know what i'm saying yeah totally yeah we're winning but we could be so much better if you just did this for us yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
But uh, then can you say, but can you say as a player, but we're winning? I'm in the, I, I start, we won. Well, what's the problem? Interesting, man. I don't know. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it unfolds, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tonight, uh, I just looked, uh, so apparently Melton missed a uh, shoot around today with a non COVID illness, but it's not going to affect his availability tonight. He, they uh-huh. say he'll, he'll still play. So we won't see Maxi back in the starting lineup tonight. He's from LA, right? Yeah. He, he's, a, he, I think he, he grew up a Clippers fan. Oh, yeah. yeah. He missed that. Yeah. He could have got him a, um, good LA, the good LA sickness. Yeah. Yeah. The, the non COVID sickness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The miss shoot around is good um, LA sickness. Yeah. I've seen a lot of them in my day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's they, they, don't, they don't usually prevent you from missing the game, but they prevent you from missing the shoot around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he had too many people to see, too many things to do. Yeah. Um, Here's an interesting question, though, going back to the ma- tying this in. If Melton missed the game, if you're the that, if the team is that sold on Maxi being a bench player, you can't start him. You 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 still wouldn't start him, start. right? No, you got to start Shake or somebody else. Oh man, hmm. that's it's gonna happen at one point. We'll see what they do for that. Because I'm saying if you're making him a reserve, there's no way you put him in a lineup when somebody gets injured. Um, but James, even you want to get that scoring in the maybe lineup. with James, but I mean even with James, I would you would put start Shake. Wow. Hmm. I just that's what I'm saying. So if 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 somebody is out and then all of a sudden he becomes a starter, then you ain't really a starter. You're a then, reserve. Then it looks like you're, you're you got benched you for Melton and yes. not for team. Yeah, you got yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Sorry. Go back to the game. <laughs> you're good. Um, so the line opened up as uh, Sixers being a one point favorite. I just checked right now. We are now one and a half point underdog uh, in this game tonight. Um, Ooh. Yeah. I've been listening to you talk, Mark. <laughs> but yeah, that's weird, huh? Is there anyone that's questionable or might not play? That's a big jump in the last. Mel, Mel was the only one on our injury report. Um, as yeah, far Paul as Paul George playing, Paul George is out. He's still out. Uh, yeah, apparently, yeah. Game time decisions to tonight. So, uh, Walls out. Luke Kennard and Paul George, all of them are at GTDs tonight. But Kawhi, Kawhi's playing. There's nothing about him not playing. So, um, yeah. So. My guess is Paul George is playing with that line switching like that. So obviously they know something that Paul George is going to play tonight. That's why the line. Yeah, that's why I asked is Paul George playing. Yeah. yeah, that's a weird jump. Melton's not making that big of a difference in a line, so that that's not that's not it. And the weird thing is, um, looks like seventy three percent of the money is on uh, the Sixers money line tonight, and the line switched like that. That's which is well, weird. I got the Sixers tonight. Ooh. Last week you you were you weren't going to take us for this game. Now uh, what, what, no, what? no 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 I didn't say that. <laughs> no, I, I said we don't take us on the Clippers. If I remember right, I said the Clippers. Yeah, and I said those two games when we left LA, we don't have a chance to win. I yes. gotcha. Yeah, especially now you're seeing guys miss shoot around. You know that some LA fun with that. <laughs> so that that's a big tell right there. Maybe they, maybe move, maybe they move the line for that. They're like, oh man, guys are missing shoot yeah, around. That's what I said. Especially if they stay in tonight in LA. Yeah, you can you can. I'll be very shocked for us to pull out that Portland game. <laughs> I think we lose. I think uh, that line move is weird. I thought the minus one was weird. Um, they were beating us pretty bad in that other game in Philly. Uh, so they have a little more of a vendetta going into it. I think we were feeling good. We won two off the road the road already. It was a good start for us. We can we could stand to lose it type thing. Um, I think, yeah, I think I think Clippers win. All right. Um, okay, so then Thursday, um, Portland. What do you guys think about that one? Now uh, spread is not out as for that one as of right now, but what do you guys have for the Portland game? Uh, I, you know, <laughs> I, believe, I do know. I believe LA catches up with us <laughs> if we lose that game. Do you change that if we lose tonight? No, it's all about us staying in L.A. I I don't think we win that game, no. Three nights in L.A.? Yeah, that's going to beat you. And we don't go back. You got to remember, you know, we played both L.A. teams, so we don't go back. Mm -hmm. So that's um, That's that's a get-it-in trip. 
I want to see because Portland's had a lot of different lineups too. They've had a lot of revolving door injuries. Um, I like to see who's available. That's probably why the line's on up too. Um, I'll say we. Oh man, that's tough. I say we lose that one. I say we. I say we roll out two straight losses. All right. I want to see who's available, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I will say what, like you guys said uh, last week, that winning those two games this weekend was uber important for the fact that you know we had these this is road trip this week so yep. it's a good and we've had trouble with portland over the years man lillard does us up so yeah yeah they, they've given some some bad beatings over the years mm-hmm. and, and and they're really good at portland too i mean that's always a tough place to play yep true yeah all right guys well that does it for us we'll see you guys on friday as we discuss um these two matchups and hopefully we come all come away with one no uh no la hangovers going into uh portland but I guess we'll, we'll see Friday. So, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. All right, guys. Later on. Later on.